Jesus in the Gospel of John. He's just entered Jerusalem and, and after he's entered Jerusalem, some Greeks want to see Jesus. And we must understand that all over the Roman Empire, there were Gentiles that attached themselves to various degrees to the Jewish synagogue because they respected this ethical monotheism of the Jewish people. And they were known as God worshippers. And those who converted all the way, they are known as proselytes. So some of these, they went up to Jerusalem at the feast. And there's Jesus, he's entered Jerusalem now. And they ask the disciples, we want to see Jesus, we want to speak to him. So, I mean, what's the connection? What's going on here? Firstly, it's about the glorification of Jesus. In other words, that, that is when he's lifted up. The second thing is, is that Gentiles will come to Jesus. And the third thing is how to serve and to follow Jesus. So those are the three important ideas in these passages. And our, and our Bible, or our larger textual unit is chapter 12 verses 20 to 36. That is the Gentiles and the cross. What's the Gentiles relationship to Jesus and also to his crucifixion? We must understand the evangelist wrote the gospel most probably in Asia Minor and Ephesus and probably the larger chunk of the disciples or Christians there would have been Gentiles but there probably were also some Samaritans and also some Jews but they were on the margins of society they did not belong anywhere they don't fit in anywhere because they no longer have the protection of the synagogue and they no longer have the protection or tradition of the pagan religions. We must also remember that this gospel, always Jesus communicates on two levels, the way John writes it. On the one level, he's addressing his disciples in the year 30, but he's also addressing the Christians in Asia Minor in the 90s. So, as these Greeks come, they also represent these Christians of Asia Minor in the 90s. So, let's look again at those three issues. If we see the the glorification of Jesus or where Jesus is lifted up because he says there now in response to the Greeks who come to him he says if we go verse 23 the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified and this is a very prominent theme in John's gospel Jesus' crucifixion is where he is glorified it's not defeat it's his moment of triumph it's where he'll be lifted up lifted up to be crucified and this is one of those double meanings that we also find in John's Gospel. So, so this double meaning here is a bit like somebody scoring an own goal in the World Cup final and then later on he's voted the player of the year in, in his country. It's, it's inherently self-contradicting. But this is the language of John. Jesus' glorification or being, being lifted up to be crucified is his glorification is where he gets exalted. And this is a strong theme in the Gospel of John. I mean, Jesus tells something similar to Nicodemus. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In chapter 8, verses 28, Jesus says something similar. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of Myself. So a very prominent theme is John, John's Gospel is that Jesus' crucifixion is where he's glorified. That is where exalted to a place of honor. And now the second theme in our immediate textual unit is that where all those Gentiles will come to Jesus. Because we saw at this feast now the Gentiles came to him. They wanted to speak to Jesus. And what's also significant is that Jesus says the following. And I, if I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all peoples to myself. So Jesus is, is addressing these Gentile Christians there in Asia Minor also. I've been lifted up to be crucified, but actually I've been exalted. I've been glorified. I exalted to a position of honor. Then I will draw all people to myself, including the Gentiles. They will come to me. So that's the second theme that's addressed here. And the third theme is, what does it mean if G Jesus draws you and to become his follower? How do you follow Jesus? 
And that's the third thing, how to serve and to follow Jesus. Verse 24, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Jesus is saying his followers, these who are on the margins of society, who do not belong to the synagogue, who do not belong to pagan society, Jesus is saying here, yeah, as a marginalized, persecuted community, you must be willing to die in order to live. Again, much irony or ironical language that's used here. So that's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You must be willing to you must be willing to die, so to speak, in order to live. And also, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves him, me, him my father will honor. That is, these people will find life, because God the Father will honor them. 